$33.1 trillion. That's how much Americans have saved up for retirement as of September 2020. About $6.5 trillion of that is held in 401k accounts, representing nearly one-fifth of the U.S. retirement market. 401ks are um, an employer-sponsored retirement plan, and it's part of what we call one part of the three-legged stool of the U.S. retirement system, um, the other two parts being Social Security and private savings. Since 1980, 401k plans have quickly grown to become one of the most popular forms of retirement plans for U.S. workers. It's frequently recommended, easy to apply for, and easy to keep track of. However, a recent survey shows that nearly two-thirds of Americans don't exactly understand how a 401k works. It's kind of something that you learn about when you get your dental pen package and your medical, you know, like, here's your medical, here's your dental, here's your 401k, here's your cubicle, be great. And I think, you know, that doesn't let you know how serious this is, especially now that retirement is very much in our own hands. So how have 401k plans become such a popular form of retirement savings? And how should they be utilized to better prepare for retirement? Until the 1980s, most Americans planned for retirement through pensions. These were defined benefit plans where employers calculated the employee's retirement benefits or lifetime annuity based on their years of service and final salary. The risk is all on the employer or the pension fund. The employer has to figure out how many years on average the people in the pension fund are going to live and has to tie the benefit to projected earnings. So there's a lot of risk on the employer or on the pension fund if it's a multi-employer fund. That changed when Congress passed the tax code with the Revenue Act of 1978. The act included a new provision in the Internal Revenue Code, Section 401k, that gave employees a tax-advantaged way to defer compensations from bonuses or stock options. Ted Benna, a benefits consultant and the so-called father of the 401k, devised the first 401k retirement plan for his clients. So what happened was in the fall of 1980, I was helping a Philadelphia area bank redesign their retirement program. And, you know, in that process of what they were trying to accomplish, I was drawn back to this section of law, which I knew existed. And interestingly enough, the um, bank turned it down because their attorney didn't want them pioneering. So the first plan we did was in our own little consulting company. Beginning in January 1 of 1981, our employees were allowed to put money in pre-tax and get a match you know, from our company. You know, that's what got this thing launched. Unlike traditional pensions that were defined benefit, 401ks were defined contribution plans. Employers would create a retirement plan in which their employees could contribute a portion of their wages on a pre-tax basis up to an amount determined by the IRS. So we went from a system where the employer in the private sector paid for the entire pension and took on all the risk to a system where the worker in the private sector um, took on most of the cost and all of the risk. Now, in most 401k plans, employers also offer to match the employee's contributions, most commonly 50 cents for every dollar saved and up to 6% of the employee's pay. It's basically free money. Your company is saying, hey, if you contribute to the 401k, we're going to contribute money on your behalf too. So if you put in 4% and your company matches 4%, you have 8% going towards your goals, and only 4% was out of your pocket, so it's a win-win. 401k and other defined contribution plans like it quickly replaced traditional pension plans. From 1980 through 2008, participants in pension plans fell from 38% to 20% of the U.S. workforce, while employees covered by defined contribution plans jumped from 8% to 31%, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. In 2020, about 60 million American workers were participants in a 401k with about 600,000 401k plans. Within a decade, the majority of, of workers overall uh, were in a 401k rather than a traditional pension. So the switch from a traditional pension to a 401k happened very, very rapidly. The employer-friendly nature of the 401k might also have played a big role in the rapid shift from traditional pensions. 401k plans can often be offered at a minimal cost compared to pensions. It can save companies on small business taxes and also provide a competitive edge in the talent market. If the company wants to be benevolent or a little bit more paternalistic, um, there's been some research that shows that offering some of these benefits or, or taking away some of the stress related to retirement, that helps increase workers' productivity. So that might be one of the reasons, but I think the biggest reason is probably to be competitive among 
among the workforce. Typically, 401k plans can be invested in four ways, employer stocks, individual stocks, mutual funds, or exchange traded funds that invest in a variety of companies and sectors. Mutual funds still remain the most popular option, accounting for 62% of 401k plan assets as of September 2020. With a mutual fund, you're able to buy shares daily. What made them very appealing to um, 401k plans because 401k money is being created every day to be invested. And you know, so it needs some place where it can be invested in, in an intelligent manner and sh uh, you know, shares bought every day and sold every day. Saving a loan for retirement is not it. It's not going to get you to your goals. So we want to be invested in the market. A lot of people don't feel comfortable in doing so. And then they also want to be diversified. So that kind of hits all of the, the Targets. It turned the mutual fund industry into what it is today. You know, the mutual fund business was a, a small pop, mom and pop type operation for 401k came uh, along. It's been incredible, you know, what it's done in that regard. 401ks also come in a different form known as Roth 401ks, where contributions are made with after-tax dollars rather than pre-tax dollars. The consensus among experts on which is better is that it depends entirely on the contributor. It depends on what you think your future tax liability is going to be, um, and that can be kind of hard to predict. If you think you're going to be on a high wage growth trajectory and you're young right now, then maybe a Roth is, is better because you might face higher taxes in the future than you do now. So the younger you are, the more I would contribute to a Roth. The older you are, the more I would contribute to it, uh, what's called a pre-tax account or a traditional IRA. It just depends on which one you're using. Age, along with risk tolerance, also plays a vital role in how you allocate your funds. There are funds like target date funds that help you automatically do that, especially for people who are not really familiar on how to allocate and balance their investments. And so that helps take some of the uncertainty out of it. The recent COVID pandemic has left a profound impact on the American economy, but surprisingly, its effect on 401ks hasn't been too severe. What we're seeing now, the stock market hasn't plummeted. We haven't seen any decline in asset values. There are obviously some health risks, but financially, upper middle class and wealthy people are doing well during the COVID recession. According to a 2018 report from Pew Research Center, about 29% of American adults live in lower income households, 52% in middle income, and just 19% in upper income. According to sociologists, only 15 to 20 percent of the entire working age population is classified as being an upper middle class. The people who were more likely to be affected by COVID and the employment shock tend to be lower earners, younger, and they're also less likely to have access to a 401k or employer sponsor plan in the first place. So for those people, it also didn't affect their retirement savings just because they didn't didn't have any in, to begin with. However, about 8% of employers have cut 401k contributions in 2020 in order to pare back expenses amid the coronavirus crisis. That equates to more than 51,000 plans, according to federal data. Small businesses were the most likely to take such cost-cutting measures. The American Retirement Association tells us that they've looked at the data and they, as they assume and they are expecting more than 200 thousand small business retirement plans are at risk of termination. Now, CBC has already reported companies like Amtrak, Haverty Furniture, companies Lazy Boy, Marriott International. Those are just some of the companies that are suspending, reducing, or delaying their matching contributions to employees' for one pay plans. Many others are considering it. If there's any good news, it's that 401ks have historically fared pretty well during times of recession. Despite the ups and downs in the market, research shows that the average account balance of 401k participants who made consistent contributions from 2010 to 2018 saw a compound annual average growth of 13.9% over that time period. Retirement savings is a, is a long run investment and it's important not to panic. Um, during these dips because stocks do tend to outperform other assets in the long run. It could possibly take a hard hit if you're 80 or 90 percent invested in the stock and you're and based on your age you should be. That can happen but you have to kind of find reassurance to know that hey trouble doesn't last always 
And at some point over time, as you, you know, the stock market will increase and rebound and you'll put yourself in a better position. Months of economic uncertainty have also driven some people to tap into their retirement savings. The CARES Act, passed in 2020, sought to help workers suffering from the pandemic by allowing individuals to withdraw up to $100,000 from eligible retirement plans without the 10% early withdrawal penalty applying. One thing that many retirement experts were very nervous about was that during this pandemic, we've made it easier to withdraw money or take money out of 401ks. There was some fear that there'd be a lot of people taking money out. I mean, we've seen some, but not as much as anticipated. And frankly, the reason is that most of the people who are losing their jobs in this pandemic had very little or nothing in these accounts. Around half of private sector workers aren't covered by an employer-sponsored retirement plan, either because they aren't eligible or because they don't have one offered to them. This includes a growing number of American workers who are contractors or self-employed. If you work for a small employer, they're probably not going to be offering a plan. A lot of companies have tenure requirements, and then a lot of companies don't give access to plans to part-time workers. I think at any given time, about half of the workforce doesn't have, they're not participating in a plan. States like California, Illinois, and Oregon have begun combating this issue by automatically enrolling private sector workers who lack access to an employer-sponsored plan. In December of 2019, Congress also passed the SECURE Act that allows small businesses to work together to offer 401k plans, called Multiple Employer Plans, or MEPs. Estimates say the SECURE Act could lead to the creation of 600,000 to 700,000 new retirement accounts. Despite these efforts, there is still a lot more work to be done. In terms of people who work for a company that offers a plan and they actually qualify to join, we see that the opt-out rate isn't super high. The bigger problem, I think, is, is people without access. Even if you're a gig worker and you um, have your own company set up, you can set up your own retirement plan. You have the option of a solo 401k, which acts just like a regular 401k through a regular plan or you can do a SEP IRA. So there's a lot of different things that are available for entrepreneurs that I just don't think a lot of people know about. So I think that's really that education, that financial literacy disconnect is really the problem, not the actual 401k itself. Invest in you, ready, set, grow. CNBC and Acorns.